Okay. We are at item nine, superintendent's report, action is necessary, 2020-2021 school reentry overview, part 16. Thank you, Ms. Hammond. This, of course, presentation does not have a recommendation at this time, and uh, I will, we're waiting for the presentation to be pulled up for us. Uh, as the board has their hard copy of this presentation, the first slide regarding our five principles, the board, of course, has seen many times before. We've been consistent to use that slide of information throughout the process of updates for reentry. Uh, tonight, we are focused upon specifically graduation. Uh, the board had some questions last time, offered us some feedback. So tonight, we're going to offer an update. Of course, we have been um, communicating to our, the dates to our community regarding when graduations are scheduled. We have ceremonies scheduled at Irmo High School um, for 8 a.m. for Friday, the June the 18th. And then again at Irmo High School for Spring Hill's graduation at 7 p.m. Uh, Spring Hill had the recommendation last year that they would rotate among District 5 school campuses. Um, since last year, of course, they graduated at the um, Chapin High School Stadium. So then we have on Saturday morning, the 19th of June, Chapin High School's graduation at their stadium, and then Dutch Fork will conclude the day on Saturday, June the 19th at 7 p.m. at Dutch Fork High School. Ms. Goggins is going to, is already, has already stepped forward tonight uh, to offer an update to the board regarding some other details of plans and the many partners that she and our team have been working with. Ms. Goggins. Members of the board, at a previous board meeting, we shared with the board information regarding graduation guest numbers, seating, and admission um, plans tonight. We wanted to provide you with important updates um, regarding those matters. First, 2021 School District 5 graduates will now be allowed six guests, which is an increase, increase from our four guests permitted last year uh, for our on-site graduations. During our last update to the board, we shared that there were several challenges to increasing our guest attendance. Those challenges still exist, but we were able to address those challenges of additional traffic, for example, due to the work with our uh, safety officers and Dr. Harris's team to implement a plan for traffic flow, which could include shuttling if necessary. Uh, we also were able to address the challenge of seating uh, thanks to the work of our Director of Operations. We will bring in additional seating on the um, field, but we would note that this is not optimal, but allows us to increase guest numbers while remaining within the recommended seating capacity numbers. After the board meeting, our graduation ta uh, team researched the topic of paper tickets um, and still determined that the best practice is to allow our graduates to continue to be uh, the ticket. So guests must arrive and enter the ceremony site with their graduates. Tickets will not be issued and there will be no general admission seating. I would also note that School District 5 does not have uh, or issue paper tickets for its sport events or other events, but rather electronic tickets are utilized. And electronic tickets are not really optimal for our graduation since there's a cost by the company um, per ticket. So allowing the graduate to be the ticket um, also allows us for smoother graduation arrival since there will be staggered arrival for our graduates. We um, also used this process last year so we know that it works well. So those are the reasons that we think um, allowing our guests to arrive with graduates is the, burst, the best strategy um, for the ceremonies again this year. And then finally, the district uh, has been working on a plan regarding inclement weather and other emergencies during our scheduled events. Uh, the district will plan to utilize a two-hour delay or a two-hour early time adjustment for graduation ceremonies if needed. In other words, for the earlier graduations, um, we could utilize a delay, uh, while the later graduations, we could move up a few hours if we needed to um, if that will allow us to address those uh, weather issues. Delays, adjustments, or makeup days would be communicated um, with impacted families. Uh, we will have some makeup days if we need to utilize those, but those will be, um, those will be rain or shine, provided there, there is no lightning or um, severe weather. 
The district will share the information that we are sharing with the board and community tonight with our seniors and with our public later this week. I wanted to take a moment to thank our principals, our district graduation team, graduation coordinators, our health officials we've coordinated with, uh, partners in neighboring districts, and all of the individuals who met with us and um, plan with us to ensure that our graduation is a success. And Dr. Melton, I'll turn it back over to you at this time. We will answer any questions that the board may have. Thank you, Ms. Goggins. And that uh, actually completes, if I could advance the slide, that completes our um, presentation this evening regarding reentry, and we will be prepared to answer any questions from the board. Ms. Hammond. Thank you, Dr. Melton. Um, did you have your hand up, Mr. Blevins? Oh, um, I'm just going to, I'd rather have your questions than I do have one, but I'm going to let the board members go first. Go ahead. Well, Dr. Melton, um, in the executive session and also tonight, we heard from one of our speakers about um, a policy, or it seems to be a policy at one of the, um, or an executive decision that was uh, to do with uh, study halls and so forth that for children that did come to school without masks. And I know Ms. Uh, Huddle asked the question pointedly, you know, who authored that? And I never heard an answer. Could, could you give us, did Ms. Goggins write that or who, who wrote that? Well, Ms. Goggins, of course, wasn't privy to the conversation. Uh, so that is something I do not know the answer to, Mr. Loveless. I didn't hear reference to study hall, but I did hear uh, Ms. Huddle share some excerpts of which I, I took notes on. So I would like, Obviously, I haven't had an opportunity to see the staff since executive session, but I would like the opportunity if I can investigate that and find out more information regarding that conversation and the follow-up in writing. Any other questions about the graduation to deal? I had one, Dr. Milton. I understand um, how many moving parts there are to that. Um, is, is six just our, our max we could do? We, could, we couldn't maybe go to eight? Is it just not is physically possible? I'm just thinking since it's outside, mm -hmm. and I'd had so many emails about, you know, it's been a hard year for everybody, and I was just thinking for those graduates. I mean, I know two more in that many, but I, 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 maybe what I wanted you to do is just explain how we were able to go from the four to the two, and you feel comfortable about it, and if we could increase it any. I, I would not make that motion unless I've listened to you guys that it's that you can physically accommodate it. Well, I don't know if Ms. Goggins is the one that has the answer to that. She definitely has been a part of the conversations. Uh, Mr. Cannon has been involved. Of course, Mr. Presley has as well, in addition to our safety team. Uh, Ms. Goggins, is that one you're comfortable to answer, or would you prefer getting some assistance from another team member? I think there are a number of uh, members of our team who can speak to that, to include Clay Cannon and uh, Dr. Harris. But I just shared that we were comfortable with four, six presents a challenge, um, eight would um, that would require us to go back to the configurations and look at that again. Uh, we are bringing in additional seats. We'd have to look for seats um, with providers um, out there. But again, we did look at that. The four that we implemented last year was within the recommendations. Um, but Mr. Cannon may have some more to share about the configurations that we now have. And Mr. Cannon, I, I realize, let's see, Irmo High could certainly the, the two venues are Irmo and what's the other one? We're actually, uh, so, we, yeah. uh, apologies, Mr. Sure. Cannon. That's okay. So Spring Hill and Irmo will be hosted at Irmo High School. Right. And then Dutch Fork and Chapin will be at their respective home schools. Okay. Um, so so what, what we looked at, uh, Chapin was probably kind of a driving Chapin. factor just given our, our uh, class size. Um, their stadium it doesn't quite have the capacity of the other two schools. Um, what we tried to do is keep parties at least three feet apart, you know, should someone choose to keep um, kind of their distance. We're seating about 600 um, folks on the field, additional chairs for parties in groups of six. Um, so that's kind of how we ended up with our six per, uh, you know, anything above that would be additional chairs on the field. I got you. So it had to do with the distancing and the size of the stadium. Yes, sir. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Just wanted to hear, hear the reasoning from people that have wondered how many we could, if we could increase it. I am glad it's increased by two, and I do thank you for, I know that was a lot of work. Um, thank you, Dr. Milton. 